Hey you guys, what's up? This is James here at Unique Perspectives with another video. Booga! <laughs> uh, hope you guys are doing well. And uh, yeah, yeah, I thought I'd make another video. I decided to, uh, I'll be honest with you guys, I was deciding and sort of, I'm sort of contemplating that I really want to make this video because I know that I already have a lot of people that accuse me of hating my own culture and things like that. So I know this video is probably not going to help, but I kind of feel a little convicted to share it anyway. So I'm going to try to run through these. I have basically 10 aspects or, or at least 10 things I believe that black people should either start implementing in their lives or at least stop doing. This is just, I'm going to run through these. I could potentially in the future make a video just about one of these aspects but really just unpack maybe in a in a different video I'll unpack these but I just want to run through these and yeah uh, I would love to hear what you guys uh, think whether you're within the black community culture or you're not you know I, I'm, I'm really open to hearing feedback from different people with different worldviews religions pers uh, different perspectives it's all good. Uh, and, you know, of course, I'm unique perspective, so I'm always interested in other insights and things like that. So I'm going to just run through these, but this is uh, 10 things I believe, and this is just my opinion, black people should either stop doing or, or should start. Number one, I think black people should actually stop complaining about the things that we don't see in our community and actually start taking initiative. Take initiative for the things that we don't see. Okay, so one of the first things I think that black people should actually really get a hold of and get a grasp on is stop being emotional. I feel like there are a lot of times when uh, something comes on TV or there's a movie or a TV show and our culture seems to get become a, a lot more sensitive to the media and things like that. We can have, I don't know, Black Lives Matter running the streets, telling us we're oppressed. And there are a lot of people that will just jump on board and just join, even for no reason. I mean, I've known people that have gone to marches and gone to things and they didn't even know what it was about. They just wanted to do it because they just started getting emotional for no reason. And so I think that it, we owe it to ourselves to understand Understand what it is that we believe in, where do we stand on everything, and also not to blindly agree with just anything or any movement, but actually, but at least inform ourselves about what it is that we are associating with. You know, somebody believes in a certain movement or a specific idea, and they're moving towards something, and they're, they're trying to recruit you. Ask questions. Don't just blindly agree and say, hey, they're black, so therefore I need to join. I don't care what culture you are or what your skin tone is. Your skin tone can look like mine, but if I don't believe in your ideology, I'm not joining. Number two kind of goes hand in hand with number one and that is stop voting Democrat. I'm not entirely sure but it almost seems like there are a lot of people within our community that they're very not only biased but they're very ignorant about uh, the differences between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Now I'm not trying to sell the Republican Party because they obviously have their own challenges and issues. I'm not denying that but I do know that uh, finding safety, finding change, finding the necessary components to actually building up our community and our society within even in the black community itself is not found in the Democratic Party. It's not found in the Democratic Party. Uh, we're constantly being sold lies. There are always these uh, policies that are really failing uh, our community when it comes to homelessness and finding job opportunities. There's these ideas for just giving money to us that honestly, it just makes us even more lazy. It, it encourages us not to work and not to be accountable for the fact that maybe we're not applying ourselves to life, to things like that. So I have an issue with that, but we have to stop voting Democrat. I think some of you are too easily emotionally moved by inspirational speeches by people that have absolutely no plan to make a change in our community. And it's sad. It's sad. Actually read the policies that any politician, whether they're mayor, they're a governor, they are trying to be a president, they're a congressman, read what it is that they actually believe. What is their worldview? What do they stand on different things? And ask yourself, do you agree with their views? Don't just get moved with emotions and, and please stop supporting the Democratic Party. Please. Number three, I think we should stop supporting black people blindly just because they're black. If I'm a filmmaker, for example, if I'm a filmmaker and I'm trying to make a movie, instead of you blindly just agreeing with supporting me, ask me what it is that I'm trying to actually make. There's a lot of us in our community that we don't even ask any questions and this kind of aligns with the first two points. We don't ask questions. We don't say, hey, what is your worldview? What, where do you stand on this topic? Are you trying to build this, I don't know, this movie, this TV show, this production? What is your goal? What is your motive 
What is your modus operandi? What is your motive behind what it is that you're building? And what is your goal? There are a lot of us that we don't ask any questions. We see somebody with the same skin tone as us and we say, hey, now I'm gonna just blindly agree with you. If I walk into a supermarket and somebody is, there's two people fighting and there's people of different cultures. I don't know, one person is Persian, one person is black. I'm not gonna say, oh, hey, this person is black. So therefore I'm gonna just automatically by default side with them. I need to know what actually happened before I even take interest in trying to help the situation. I'm not gonna just blindly agree with the person that's black. Uh, as an American, I see everyone as American. I don't really see anyone as, hey, this is a white person, this is a black person, this is a, you know, I appreciate and I can acknowledge a person's culture and things like that, but that doesn't tell me anything about their worldview, what they believe in, you know, their, their work ethics. Do they believe in God? That doesn't tell me anything. That just tells me their skin tone is this or their skin tone is that. It doesn't tell me anything. And I think a lot of us, we need to stop judging people based on skin tone. We complain about races and racism and things like that in our, in our country. And then we'll turn around and be racist. Number four, it's our diet, eating recklessly. We need to stop eating recklessly. I know that uh, there are a lot of us, including myself, I love a good burger, I love good soul food, I love Popeyes chicken, I love all that good stuff, McDonald's, you name it. But I also like going for two hour walks when I'm, you know, I I'm not working, the days I'm not working, or maybe even before work. I like working out, I like exercising a little bit, and do something, you know. But I think we need to be active, and but we need to be very careful with uh, what it is that we're actually eating, what our diet looks like. Although I may make fun of some people at times when they're just eating a salad for a meal and not anything else, I think that it's important for those of us, especially in our community, to be very careful with what it is that we're putting in our body. Out of all the cultures in the United States, especially our black men and women, but specifically our black women, they are the biggest and the heaviest and the most obese out of all cultures within the United States. And we're just 13% of the population. There's a lot of reckless eating and a recklessly just consuming things that we don't need in our body. There are a lot of us that are just drinking down sodas and we're not even, you know, aware of how much sugar's in the sodas. You know, don't, don't get me wrong. Every now and then I might even indulge just a little bit, I, but I don't bring it in the house. I don't buy soda and bring it in. I might go to a party every now and then and somebody has different drinks and there may be a soda. I may have one during, our, you know, but even that sometimes it gets a little sugary for me. So we have to be just aware of what it is that we're putting in our body. I think some of us, we work out pretty good. We have to understand that the foundation of being healthy is what it is that you're putting in your body, not just working out and stuff like that. And number five really is aligned with number four, and that is working out. We have to work out. I know that there's some people that are not really in the mood to run around and jog. I know there are a lot of people, you know, in different countries, but specifically here in America, there's a lot of people that I see in the white Caucasian community, not all, but a lot of ladies and men, they just go and work out. You know, there's a lot of Latinos that work out. There's a lot of people that I'm going for walks. I'm going working in Orange County, uh, where a lot of, you know, majority is, is white Caucasian and Asian. And I see a lot of people exercising, working out, walking their dog and going up, up and down the street. And they're just exercising. They're not even running around. They're at least walking. And so I think there's a lot of us that are robbing ourselves of the opportunity of living a healthier, more successful life, simply because we're just not working out. I enjoy Netflix. I enjoy video games. I enjoy movies just like everyone else. But I also make time to walk and exercise and pick up the dumbbell every now and then and do something, you know, but we have to be active. Mm -hmm you know, serving ourselves in that way because, you know, how are you going to serve your family and your community and your friends if you're not taking care of yourself? So please look after yourself. I addressed this a little bit, but number six is don't be racist. I, I, some people even call it reverse racism, but reverse racism is racism. There are a lot of us that have no issue judging people based on their skin tone and that's not giving you any information, like I said earlier, about who it is that they are, what their beliefs are, do they believe in God? What do they think about, I don't know, the holidays? Are they a good parent? Do they have good work ethics? That doesn't tell you anything except that person's hair texture and their skin tone. And that's that's really nothing. You're not getting any information. So a lot of us, we need to stop judging people based on these meaningless attributes. They, they don't contribute to anything with getting to know a person, you know? And I've had the privilege of getting close to people from Nigeria to Berlin, Germany, uh, places in Asia, the Philippines, you name it. And it's just wonderful to have a wonderful variety of people from different cultures, but the core of who they are is their personality, their character, their integrity. That's what tells me who they are. And so I think it's important just to not be racist, not say, hey, that person's white, so they're automatically probably rich. No, there are some people that they really have a, a lot of wonderful things in their life. They have great vehicles and they have a beautiful home. They have all the stuff, but it's because they worked for it. 
Not because they had some type of trust fund or they inherited. And I know plenty of people that have migrated in this country and they didn't have a dime to their name, but they decided to work hard. And now they're successful because they, they put in the effort. So please don't be racist, my Please. Number seven kind of aligns with this, but it's interracial dating. First off, there's no such thing as interracial dating because we're all the same race. I know that's very hard for people to figure out, but there's no such thing as interracial dating. If somebody is, I don't know, East Asian and another person is Persian, uh, they are of the same race. They are human beings. They're both are made in the image of God. They both have a heartbeat. They both have a bloodstream. They have veins. They have a brain. They have two eyes. And guess what? If they have a child, their child is going to have blood in their body too. They're going to have a brain. They're going to have all these same elements. We're all made in the image of God. There's no such thing as interracial dating. I know that a lot of people that like that idea, and I know that sometimes we have to use that to help people understand what it is that we're talking about. When it comes down to it, to the foundational level, there's no such thing as interracial dating. One race. And I think that there are a lot of people in the black community, men and women, that have issues when somebody within our community decides to date or marry somebody of another culture or another people group. And I don't know why that, that is even a thing. Who cares? As long as the person, the people love each other, we should be more than happy to promote and encourage them to love each other even harder. I don't know. I think that's an issue, but something I think that is always coming up, circulating YouTube, circulating the internet. You got to stop putting a lot of emphasis on this and just support people to love and value one another. Made in the image of God, one man, one woman, and support their family. Number eight, we adopt the victim mentality way too much. Way too much. I, I'm talking to a lot of people all the time within my community, and it's almost like so they can be a victim. So they can adopt them. The victim mentality. And they don't want to be told that they can be empowered and actually build a business or build an empire. It's like they, they want to, they, they find refuge in being a victim and not having a lot of things. And it's very strange, you know. And even for me, I'm, I'm going through some challenges right now in my life, you know. But I don't see it as that's the... You know, that's the end of my story. I see it as this is a hurdle that I'm going through and I'm going to keep going until I succeed and get that ideal motorcycle, get that ideal car, get that ideal house, whatever. I think there's a lot of us that we don't even think about a house. We don't think about the ideal car. We don't think about all these things because we think that we can't do it. That there's a lot of us in our community, we're telling each other that we can't succeed. And I think that's the wrong message. I mean, I know people my age that are in their middle age phase in their life and they're in that season in their life and they refuse to get even a license because people in their community, our community, have told them over and over again their entire lives for four decades, practically, that you're never going to amount to anything because the government and the white people and all these other people are against you. So they just checked out. So I think we need to really reevaluate the victim mentality and teaching that to our kids. Number nine, I'm just going to mention it, but we need to be more cautious and careful with who it is that we decide to date and specifically marry. Uh, I know a lot of people, I have one of my close friends right now, he connected with a lady that he really should not have even been associating with. And now his life has just doubled down into the drama and all this other stuff. And we need to be very careful and cautious with who it is that we decide to marry. I'm a Christian. Obviously, I cannot be with somebody that's not a Christian. And we need to have some type of parameters and boundaries with who it is that we're going to give our bodies to and our lives to and serve in a relationship. We can't just say, hey, that guy's tall. I'm going to build a life with him. Or, hey, she's really pretty with these nice hips. I'm going to build a life with her. We have to look deeper at their level of intensity. Integrity. What are their work ethics? You know, are they taking care of their life? They're managing their lives. Are they suitable for us to connect with? But we can't just give ourselves to that person and just hope and wish that they figure things out. There's a lot of ladies that have made that mistake and they are regretting it, you know. And a lot of our black women, you know, they're not barely even getting married in this country because of, of that same issue. They're constantly giving themselves to men that are not qualified. So men and women, please, in my community, Let's straighten that up. Last but not least, I think black people, I mean, obviously some of us are already good with God, but I think one of the priorities or the priority is to get right with God. And that is understanding that we are sinners. We are not going to get to heaven on our own accord. I know all the different false religions teach that, um, but the Bible has been very clear. God is the one that makes us righteous. We do not make ourselves right with God. God has to cleanse us and make us right with him. The gospel essentially is uh, that we broke God's law and Jesus paid our fine. All these th uh, different elements that I'm talking about, a lot of these things align uh, from a foundational level with building a relationship with the eternal God, the God of the Bible that spoke this world into existence. The only way we're going to progress in life is being right with God. And this is when God changes us from the inside out and takes refuge.
residence in us because we understand and acknowledge that we have to put our trust completely in Jesus, the Son of God, and repent of our sins. The idea of repenting, but then trying to work towards our salvation, like Roman Catholicism, Mormonism, Black Hebrew Israelites, the Jehovah Witness, Judaism, and all these different religions, the idea has, is, is very clear in the Bible. That is, by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it's a gift from God, not of works, so no one will boast, and so no one may boast. So that's Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Guys, God bless you guys. I just ran through these. Uh, hope this is not going to be too long for you. Take care. Peace. If you have any questions or comments, please hit me up. I am always open for a dialogue. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Peace. And like and subscribe. Bye.